G'day folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at our first mini disc unit on the channel. This is a Sony MDS E10 Pro Audio mini disc machine. And uh, basically what it's here for is because I got the bright idea in my head that uh, since I already tangled with DCC, I thought I would take on the, the rival format in mini disc and uh, see how well I like it. Plus, I get a certain perverse sense of satisfaction knowing that I'm going to be making the DCC machine and the Sony mini disc machine fight each other and interface with each other. The complaint about this one is it's got a mini disc stuck in it and it will not eject. I'm hoping that's just a uh, belt issue, but uh, I don't know for sure that it is. But uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, try the, the one of these Pro Audio units first is uh, because uh, these Sony Pro Audio units will ignore copyright stuff. So you can copy back and forth as much as you like and uh, not have to worry about that. I've never really liked the uh, copyright protection the industry had going on in the 90s. It's basically why I didn't like either DCC or Minidisc after a while. Like I said, this one's got a disc stuck in it and will not eject. Apparently it does play and uh, whatnot, so... Yeah, hopefully we can bring this back around without too much trouble. Now, immediately, we've got the, uh, the mini disc loading door on the front here, or on the top. I'm hoping this just needs a, uh, a belt, but uh, considering this was stuck to the top of the machine, someone's already been inside it, so I don't know if it's going to be that easy. But we'll just fire it up here and see what it does. Okay, and it's read the disc. This is, I think, a magneto-optical format. Kind of like CDs, but kind of not. But, uh, yeah. This one's got MDLP, which is kind of what you want in, uh, in a mini disc these days, because, uh, that enables you to record much longer onto a, a mini disc than the older stuff would, but uh, yeah. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, this switch doesn't seem to be working well, but the display is changing. It's really not working that well, this switch. I can get it to change modes. That's going to need some help. If, that is, I can get this machine working. I don't know how to use this thing. Okay, there's only two tracks on there, I guess. See if it plays anything. Yes, it would seem so. And I know that song, and I'm very likely to get a copyright hit on that. Try track two here. Okay, yeah, it does kind of work. See what happens when I try to eject. Just makes noise, does nothing. So we're gonna have to get in there and see if we can deal with that. But first, let's look at the back panel. This, folks, is why I wanted this particular machine. We've got both coaxial and optical digital ins and outs. I thought that was important if I ever got into any doing any more DCC machines because a lot of them only have coax or only have optical, and I wanted something that could handle both formats at the same time, and this one can. The MDS E12 is kind of similar to this, except it has XLRs, and it's, I think, missing the coaxial uh, digital ins and outs. So, uh, yeah, we've got an analog input level there. Uh, yeah, not really too much to see, so let's get inside this thing and see what it's like. Now, I've heard that when you get one of these from Japan, you can s sort of uh, modify the power supplies to work in the uh, U.S. and Canada, so I was kind of looking there first, but uh, 
This one actually came from, I think, Maryland or something like that. East Coast United States somewhere. That's all I know for sure, without taking a look at my uh, records again. But uh, here's the drive here, and you can see I've got my anti-static wrist strap on. I have a feeling I'm going to need it. Doesn't look too hard to get into this thing. I'm going to power it up again. And we're just going to see what happens when this thing tries to eject. It really sounds like the belt's just broken. Yeah, that's exactly the problem here. But uh, I want to caution you, just like DCC, don't touch those unless you absolutely... Er, yeah, actually just don't touch those, period. If you, uh, if you send static through that, you'll break it and it won't record again. At least so I've heard. I have no plans on touching that, so... Hopefully I've, I avoid that. So yeah, we gotta get the uh, drive out to try and make it eject again so we can gain access to the loading belt. I've done some research, but probably not as much research as I could have done. I'm using my brand new vessel P2 screwdriver, literally the best screwdriver I've ever had because it's both JIS compliant and Phillips compliant. But uh, yeah, let me back you out a little bit here. See if I can get this drive up enough to uh, see what it's like on the underside. I wonder if I can get it to eject just in this position here. I want to see just how this mechanism works and I want to get it closer to me so I can do this a little better. Not exactly sure how the eject works on this. I'm going to try a few things. If I can find the button. Okay, I got the disc out. It's a Daiso MD-74. And I'm just taking a look from the front. There is a belt in there. Maybe not a good belt. Just trying to show you here. You can kind of see it right in there. I'm going to try replacing that and we'll see if that fixes it. I'm going to try doing this without even disconnecting cables. I'm going to try to just get through the front here and replace it that way. So let me get a dental pick here. Oh yeah, that belt is no good ski. It's also missing ski. It fell inside the machine at ski. Don't mind me, I don't know what I'm talking about again. Okay, belt is out. And no good. So we're going to try and replace that. Now, fortunately, in my last deck tech order, 
I discovered that those guys actually have belts for that machine. If I can find it, I will use it. Because I threw that into my order with the uh, Phillips DCC stuff. It's going to be fun fishing that belt in through there, but uh, we'll manage somehow. And this is my other little vessel screwdriver I bought. Literally the best screwdrivers ever. I'm going to buy a whole set of these, I think. I only bought a couple for now because they're just so darned expensive, but... Yeah. There's your deck tech thing you want to look for for one of these. Presumably this works for anything using this transport. I'm not exactly sure what does. There's a possibility that it might need more than this, like some greasing as well, but uh, I will worry about that after I get this done. Provided I can get the uh, actual belt to go in there. Okay, new belt is on. I'm not going to bother trying to grease anything. What I will do instead is I will put this metal shield back on and hopefully this thing's working now. Rather I will put this on the right way. All right, that should be good to go. Let's find out, shall we? I should probably put another put at least one of the transport screws in in order to uh, hold the transport down. Like I said, not worried about the door at all right now. I'm just worried about this thing recording. I don't know if it does that. Okay, power's on. Now, you might see this stack of mini discs over here. These did not come with the machine. These came from eBay. I decided to order one of those uh, gigantic lots of uh, mini discs from Japan just to see what they listen to over there. I'm going to try this uh, music jack thing here. Okay, it loaded that just fine. Okay, 21 tracks. Does it play these? Well, it's playing that, whatever it is. I don't have the audio connected right now, but... Uh... Ah, we got it fixed. It was that easy, just the loading belt. But yeah, the deck tech belt for this machine, perfect, first time. Little fiddly to get it in there, but it works. I gotta say, this is going way better than uh, any of these DCC machines have gone. This thing is a tank. But of course it would have to be if it's a pro audio unit. Okay, so... Let me secure the... Uh, the door thingy in here. I'll put the lid back on and we'll see if we can get it to record and play with some other stuff. Okay, so the DCC machine is hooked up and we're ready to go here. I've got both analog and digital from the DCC unit connected, so... Everything should work here. And uh, I think this will record because I had it blank out one of the uh, Japanese mini discs, so... Doesn't seem to be a problem there. So uh, since the DCC machine isn't doing very well with uh, digital stuff, we're going to go analog for at least that part of it, but uh, not exactly sure how this works yet. But I'll show you the uh, 
the menu system on the uh, mini disk unit here real quick. If I can. Okay, we go into menu. There's the edit menu. We've got uh, name, undo, and setup. Okay, we're in the setup menu now. Play mode, continue. You can do shuffle, program, M access, whatever that is. I'm going to stick with continue. Repeat mode. And you press down on this button in order to, to enter this. Repeat all, repeat one. I don't know what that is. Don't know what that is. Got a bunch of different stuff in here. I'm going to have to figure out how to use now that I got this thing apparently working. But uh, yeah, you get to the uh, the blanking mo mode from the uh, from the uh, edit menu. I don't know where I am right now. Well, I guess I can't access the uh, blanking menu because it's already been blanked, so. Yeah, let me see. I think I've got it connected to analog, so let me hit play on the DCC machine. It is playing. We're going to try analog first. I'm going to zoom out just a bit. It is playing right now, as mentioned. You'll have to take my word for it. I can't press these buttons very well. Hmm. Not sure what all this stuff does. I wonder if this record button's even working. There might be more wrong with this, and sorry to bump you there. It doesn't feel like that button's doing anything. Let me stop the DCC machine real quick here, and we'll get back inside this, because I want to take a look at that. Okay, so I think I finally figured out how to get this thing apart in order to uh, check the buttons in front, and it's not so intuitive. There's four screws on the bottom you got to remove, two screws on either side, and you've got to disconnect this and disconnect the uh, power to the uh, front switch here, and then there's a bunch of screws back here that we have to remove in order to, uh, to access the buttons. So I'm just going to pull those out now, and I hope I'm getting the right ones. They're marked with arrows, at least I think the right ones are. And I think there's another one down in here, at least I see one. We'll find out if it's uh, one that holds it on. And uh, I don't see any more than that. Oh, wait, there's one more here, possibly. I wonder if that needs to be removed. Let's find out. Oh, maybe this black screw is the only one. Yeah, I think that's the only one left. I'm going to try to leave that ribbon cable connected, too. If I can. Ooh, it's dusty under here, I'll tell you what. Okay, yeah. Bunch of those screws did not need to come out, it looks like. So I'm going to put the difficult one back in now. Because we don't need to get under that board at all. We just need to get under this one over here.
see what's going on with these buttons. Okay, let me see what we got here. If I can. All right, so where's record? There's record. Button does actuate. Okay, the record is this one right here. Let me show you. It's this one. I can't tell whether or not anything's broken off. Possibly it is. Take a look at the button switches here. They're all like this, so... Uh, so record is next to stop. Maybe that button is broken. Maybe it's just out of position is all. Let me see if I can get that back in there and uh, we'll see if we can get that button to actuate. Could be it just slipped off of the little post over there or something. So I will try to reinstall and see if it can engage all of the buttons. I got it. It's working. It definitely was not engaging that button before, or that button switch before, but it is now. So we'll check it out again before I put it back together, just to make sure everything works. Now I'm not going to bother with trying to figure out how to get to the MDLP stuff. Just now, I just want to make sure it works first. And I should mention that uh, you can connect a PS2 keyboard over here to enter track titles that way. And I've got a keyboard that I'm going to be trying with this. I just don't know if I'm going to do it on camera. But uh, first things first, let's see if we can get this to, to actually record something now. Starting the DCC machine again. Okay, what is DIN unlock? I'm going to have to go consult the service manual to figure out what the heck that is. Okay, so did unlock refers to uh, the digital source or whatever not being connected properly. So I probably should have taken a look at that switch while I was in there, but I did not. I'm going to try the coax in here. And it is working. So we are getting digital out from the uh, DCC machine. I think we're running up to between tracks here, so I need to set the uh, levels here. Not exactly sure how. I know there's that control in back, but... I think it's actually recording now. Oh well, this will do for a test. Yeah, levels are really low. Okay, that's a 34 second track, I guess. And it's reading as one track in. Let's see if it plays. Yeah, she does. Let's see if I can get it over to analog in. Well, 
that's a little bit hot. So I'm going to have to turn this down and back. Okay, we'll go 20 seconds on that one. And yeah, it seems to be working. Let me get the keyboard and we'll see if we can uh, get the uh, data entered. Okay, keyboard is connected. Let me zoom you out here. I do not know how to do this, so bear with me. I don't know what this is. Okay, that is clearly not what I'm typing right now. Is this thing set to Japanese? What the heck is going on? I bet it was set to Japanese. All right, let me see if I can do this now. Uh, no, we're still getting gibberish here. Weird. Oh, there's the copy bit stuff. I'm going to set that to permit because I obviously want that. There's our keyboard stuff again. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I'm guessing this all needs to be cleared out or something so I can use the keyboard. I'll deal with that another time. For now, let me get out of this. We need to get back in here and see what's going on with this switch. All right, so here's the issue with the switch, folks. The issue is it completely needs replacing. There's no saving it. Here's what I've got on the back side of it. All the traces are pulling up off the board which is already bad enough, but uh, it seems like there's no spring left in this switch. So uh, there's no saving this. I have to get a replacement switch from somewhere if I want to keep using this machine to its full capabilities. But uh, as you saw, I was able to manipulate this switch in order to get it to change inputs, but uh, yeah. I don't have a replacement for this, so I'm going to have to try and find one somewhere. But uh, for now, I'll just uh, put this back together and do the best I can with it. The solder joints actually look decent. I might touch those up a little bit. But uh, yeah, the switch is no good ski. Not exactly sure what happened to it, but uh, oh, wait a minute. Let me see. Let me just check something here. It might actually be the switch came apart. I think that's what happened. The switch came apart and somebody was just pushing down on it too much. This might actually be salvageable. Let me get the switch off here and then we'll see what we can do with it. So, yes, that was the issue. The switch just literally 
pushed itself apart because somebody was a little too gung-ho with it. So I gotta try and put this back together now. You can see the switch contact right there. Kind of slides back and forth. But uh, yeah, the way it was, it wasn't gonna work properly again. So I just need to uh, straighten out these four pins here. And I should be able to get this back together, I think. Let me get my pliers so I can do that. Taking a look at the contacts as well. They look a little dirty, so I might as well grab my Deoxit D100 and give them a little once over here before I try and do anything to put this back together. Hopefully this is all she needs in order to be happy. Okay, let me see if I can get this switch back together now. But yeah, you'll find this happens with Pro Audio stuff sometimes, depending on who's using it. You can have a bunch of different broken controls, like obviously the... Uh, the record button wasn't making contact anymore and all that, but uh, yeah, the unfortunate part of working on this particular machine is that uh, you have to take every single circuit board out in order to uh, access this part of it. I'm just going to bend these tabs back over and then we'll reinstall the switch and see if it works. Okay, that should hold itself together now. It is working properly now, at least apparently. It's working better than it was anyway. All right, I think she's back together well enough for testing now. We're gonna find out whether or not this switch works or not. Powering up. Okay, let's try the switch. Okay, coax in, optical in. It's a little fiddly yet, but it it's working much better. Still playing back the recording. Let's see if it goes into record pause. Sure does. I'm going to call it fixed. So I'm going to put the rest of the screws back in and call it a video. We've got ourselves a working MDS E10 mini disc recorder. At least as far as I know. I don't know what's going on with the keyboard yet, and I have no idea how to get into the MDLP settings, but I'll figure that out at some point when I want to record something. But for now, I'm calling it good, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.